Let's get this started. Yummy. What's up? Um, oh my god. I could hear you twice. There we go. Hey. Hey. Hey, just to let you know, Renegades don't have a scrim after this. They don't. Okay. So, no, no hope for Furia. Yeah, I don't think Furia... Well, I asked STL. Uh, no, no, no. I think Envy is scrimming somebody, so you should be fine. If if they... Maybe they watch back the VOD and they're like, this guy is never streaming our scrims ever again. <laughs> Stupid European. Get him out of here. Mate, I don't know. I, I, I didn't have any complaints <laughs> from Orgs, but... We'll see. We'll we'll see if we can find out, chat, what is happening after this one. If anybody's streaming scrims that we can watch. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure because Linus was uh, at the land center today, hanging out with Turbo. No way. And and he said that they were doing their first scrim in an hour for now, I think. Ah, uh, okay. And he was hanging out until then, so. Does uh. That's, that's likely going to be the case. Okay, got it. Does anybody know? Oh, what a goal by Fever! <laughs> Does anybody know? Uh, who Envy are scrimming in the hour after this one? Anyone in chat? I Any no Envy idea. people? Mist was in chat yesterday. He was just telling me. It is, it, well, he was just telling us all in Twitch chat. Envy endpoint after this. Okay. Uh, by the way, ever since uh, I watched them get 8-0'd yesterday by Dignitas, and it wasn't even pretty. Like, every single game was 4-1 at the best. That was, like, the best result. The best game is 4-1. What? It was a 1-4, yeah, in-game. I've I've now hitched my wagon to Furia. Let's go. <laughs> Furia are my team. <laughs> I'm moving to Sam, boys. But uh, yesterday, they were also saying, or chat was saying, was it you? I can't remember who said that Renegade screamed SRG yesterday as well, and they lost. Is that is yeah, that true? I don't, I don't think I said that, but they did lose. It was Somebody in chat said. And yeah. SRG are in uh, Middle East right now on hotel internet, so they've had some really interesting... <laughs> I've seen some replays that are very laggy from them, but they're actually doing really well from what I've heard. G2 versus yeah, Endpoint right now, cool. At 120 ping, you know, it's it's the advantage if you ask some people on Reddit. Yeah, some people do think that high ping is an advantage. Some people saying G2 versus Endpoint. I'm, I'm guessing that uh, Eclipse is streaming that one. Because he's been uh, streaming all of the endpoint scrims this week. What a lad. That's pretty cool. I think uh, based on how G2 or how much G2 were struggling yesterday, they'll probably need a couple more days to adjust to the time zone because they did not sound like they were having a good time yesterday. But hopefully they had a good night's sleep and they're ready to rock and roll. Endpoint called themselves not a scrim team, so maybe G2 can clap them. We'll see. I mean, watching Endpoint, they don't look like a scrim team, so I'm willing to back that up. Oh. Oh, well, it doesn't look like Renegades are a <laughs> scrim team either. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, dear. That's the problem. Renegades are a scrim team. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, CJ, Yummy's watching the replay here. <laughs> Yummy, you're going to get us in trouble. You guys get replays. Yeah, <laughs> don't watch yeah, them. I, that. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, CJ thought Kami had it, I guess, but. Maybe they had a bit of a you, 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 no you moment. Oh, a little bit of uh, season eight lamb sicky moment. <laughs> Scoreboard, well, this is the first game, so there isn't any score. Is the stream lagging? Somebody in chat saying it's lagging. Is it lagging for anyone oh, else? God. It's not looking good for Renegades in defense. Hold on, let me skip that. <laughs> Renegades need to wake up. Everything's falling apart because the thing that I've been really complimentary of uh, Renegades this season has been their defense. Oh, really? Because, you know, in the past, they were oh. always like just hyper aggressive, yeah, trying yeah, to keep yeah. a lot of pressure. But if they're ever in defense, it just fell apart or they get counterattacked, mm. uh, which has been especially important in OCE because a lot of teams have been very defense heavy and counterattack heavy. Mm -hmm. But so far, we haven't seen the Renegades defense particularly holding up. I did see that their, you know, saves per game stats are all really low. Usually, like, in NA or EU, all the top teams, even if they're winning tournaments, still have tons of saves because mm -hmm. both teams will get a good look at the goal. But I, I'm guessing Renegades are just not defending that much in OCE because their, you know, save stats are pretty low and that's... They're winning. Uh, you know, I'm looking at st events that they've literally dominated. So they're probably just in offense a lot, right? Yeah, of course. That's great. That's great from ZJ. Oh, look at the CJ Don't with the finish. Very often. 
You're gonna get us kicked out here, Yummy. They're gonna listen to back and they're just gonna be like, never invite them again. Never let them stream our replays. Well, our replays? Uh, Screams. This is what I say on RLCS about CJ, so... Yeah, but he, he doesn't kicked off from that yet. He, he, well, I mean, he doesn't really have control of the talent roster, does he? But they, they can <laughs> just not invite us to the scrim. <laughs> they're, they're definitely in charge here. <laughs> he knew what was what what, the, what was installed. He did. Uh, he did. Yeah. Um, Grind Zero will look better in scrims than Renegades. It, is that usually yeah. the case? Uh, no, uh, they're not as good as scrim team. However, that's because normally they're massive trolls in scrims. Ah, I see, uh, so okay. Uh, if they win too much in a scrim, then they'll start trolling. But also if they lose too much in a scrim, they'll start trolling. But I think with the international competition and like actual opponents that they have a lot of respect for, that's not going to be the case, which is probably yeah. helping out their cause. And uh, from like a base mechanical level, they, they, they are a more mechanical team, which probably is going to favor them a lot more in international competition as well. I see. The other thing is that for international teams, I mean, right now everybody's scrimming everybody as far as I'm aware. Nobody's declined scrimming any certain teams. But if well, a team... Scrimming endpoint. Oh, well, yeah, of course, the, they're not scrimming the round one matchups in some cases. Although I think Fury are scrimming Semper today or tomorrow, and that's actually their round one match, if I'm not mistaken. So in some cases, teams are actually just going, going ahead and scrimming the team that they're playing in the very first game of the, uh, of the LAN. But, uh, you know, what I was going to mention is that, you know, if, if a minor region team came in and they just trolled scrims, people would not scrim them again. You know, if you troll, mm -hmm. if you're grind zero and you troll scrims in, in OCE, you're still one of the best teams and teams will go ahead and scrim you anyway, probably, because they want to get that practice. But, you know, you do that against uh, an EU team and they're going to be like, no, we're not scrimming you again. We've got options. Well, there's, there's so many teams here who are currently scrimming. Renegades and ground zero scrimmed once in the last seven months, so... Yeah, I, I heard about I didn't know if that was public, but I heard from, I think, yourself or someone else in uh, maybe Renick, maybe it was CJ who told me that they just don't scrim each other. Got a bit of a rivalry. You know, I really do feel like they should put their uh, rivalry aside, though, because now with OCE having to work together to try and get a world's auto qualification spot, it benefits both of them if the other is better, in a way. Yeah, I mean, they did. They, they actually they scrimmed twice. They did it once, um, just before, after Renegades got eliminated. Mm -hmm. They warmed up Ground Zero the next day, and then they did it at least once in preparation for this. Uh, but yeah. normally they don't. They they stop doing it because of Ground Zero like not taking it as seriously. So I see. End, I like, see. All they were kind of doing is helping Ground Zero, but not helping themselves. Mm, yeah. Uh, and then they had a lot of success. You know, they haven't lost a ground zero this season, so... Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I think, that it, you know, other, we're probably going to see that from a lot of minor regions. I know uh, Middle East right now are, mm -hmm. you know, very try-hard with the scrims, even though they only have one spot for majors. Um, the Ultimates, who are sitting in second place by a very small margin, actually. Falcons are pretty close to them now, but SR, uh, the Ultimates, who are second in Middle East points, are scrimming SRG religiously to help them improve because getting that uh, you know potential extra seed for that was open that is also a shot okay hold on <laughs> why is it over anyway I was gonna say you know get the the minor regions they want to get like extra seeds for worlds and that is through yeah. helping your team who is at the major or teams who are at the major do as well as possible so in Middle East case it's just Sandrock Gaming yeah I mean it's not it's not the case with like any of the other teams um, but yeah, mm -hmm. and I actually think Ground Zero don't want to troll. It's just kind of like how they end up doing it. Like they just kind of lose. They just get lose bored. Motivation at some <laughs> point. Yeah. We saw that a little bit from um, Renegades, not Renegades, Furia yesterday. They were sweating. Well, it looked like they were sweating. All like I followed them for three scrims. I watched them play Endpoint, Dingy Test, and then I watched them play Envy. And for I think four and a half games, they were looking pretty, you know, sweaty against Envy, and then they. Just started pre-jumping everything, <laughs> like going for so many demos. I'm like, what are they doing? This is not consistent. But yeah, they, I think they that just got a bit tired. If you, if you did like three team scrims in a row. Yeah, they, they're on their fifth scrim in a row, so it makes sense. Oh god, yeah. they did five in a row. That's that's like way of. Well, I actually think teams should scrim, like they should be scrimming four four times a day. Four is a good like number. A break, like yeah, two, I two agree. Blocks. 
Yeah, I think two blocks of two would be better than one block of five. I agree. <laughs> Wait, what? What yeah. I miss? Oh, I was just laughing at, at your <laughs> what you said. Wait, what? Well, I I, I can totally remember two, what I said. Two blocks of two are way better than oh! one block of five. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's always going to be the case. I thought you were making a funny joke. I still don't get it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Is that innuendo? Did I say something really dumb? No, no, you didn't. <laughs> it just sounded really sarcastic, like it was such oh, a good statement, you know? Well, I mean, two, two, time, two times two is not as much as one times five, so people might think yeah. five is better than four, but I think, uh, you know, the break is probably useful. Well, from, well, like, once you get to that third scrim, like, it's really hard for most teams. I, a lot of teams lose it after it you know, an hour and 40 minutes of straight Rocket League, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so usually, like, going into a third one is almost clinically insane, and you're very mm. likely to not get much out of it, and your opponents aren't going to get much out of it. But chat, chat all got it, apparently. You and chat are all <laughs> catching my humor today, but I'm not. <laughs> it's the way I word it. I need to go back and listen to that, because I completely... As soon as you, like, started laughing, I was like, what did I even say? Like, I've got a very short-term <laughs> memory for things I've just said, and I've got a really good memory for things I said, like, years ago. I don't know why, but that's just the way my brain works. Uh, yeah. I mean, the only reason I remember results in OCE is because I typically go over them, like, so many times, and with, like, tier lists and power rankings and crap like that. Mm -hmm. I've, I've realized that I've had to write down all the results uh, across NAEU, etc., in order to be able to remember them, because normally mm. I only just watch them and go over them once, and then I forget them, like, ten minutes later. Right, right. So, for anybody who's just tuned in, yeah, we're just going to be watching one game of uh, Renegades vs. Furia today. They are not interested in finishing this one. We had an open net miss from uh, <laughs> Renegades, so clearly they're, they're onto something here. They've collaborated to just make us watch one super long overtime. Very funny. Ooh. Nice save. I'm not surprised to see uh, CJ miss, miss shots, you know, maybe they'll warm up <laughs> into it. He's, he's nervous against his idol card. Mm, true. So they've got a picture on Twitter for anybody who wants to go and see CJ. Good thing for him, you know, in photographs you can't see um, the blur that would likely be there from his shaking hands as he's holding the, <laughs> I think he's holding card's shoulder in that yeah. one. Holding him for support. Uh-huh. Imagine cross-region move. Card moves to OCE to join CJ. Oh, my goodness. That would be a cross-region move that would really surprise me. Okay, here's one for you. After seeing complexity success, true neutral success in NA, do you think another team from a non-North American region will move to North America for next season? I've, I've been calling this that Psionics, what, what's going to happen is slowly more and more teams move from like EU to NA, OC to NA, and all eventually get to a point where there's like no NA teams going to the major and Psionics have to introduce rules about who can and can't play in order to ensure that there are NA teams going. Yeah, you know, some people listening are probably getting ready to rage at that take but didn't that literally happen that in, League of, in League of Legends that happens in League yeah. of Legends you need a certain amount of Americans on your team or North Americans in your team <laughs> because so many Europeans and Koreans and Chinese players were I don't, I don't know about Chinese but definitely Koreans and Europeans were just coming to North America and stealing the spots so they had to make it that you need to have uh, I think three out of five of your players be from North America then the problem is that players were moving to NA and staying there for long enough that they would actually get citizenship and now you've got full teams who are technically American but none of them are actually American uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it, it like delays the uh, infiltration I suppose you have a, a limited number of imports and I recall because they actually mm. they shut down OC League Legends basically um, mm -hmm. But what they did to quote unquote compensate them is OC imports don't count to your import limit. So really, okay. You can have a full OC team in America if you really want. Now I, I do want to say <laughs> game one. <laughs> I do want to say uh, I don't think that will happen with Rocket League because you know no. the American scene are pretty good at Rocket League, even though we like to meme about them and uh, roast them every time that they lose and cope too hard but um 
I think it's likely there will be European teams moving to NA. Not only because it's uh, free to win there, but also because... It's usually better for your content creation, better for, you know, your brand and stuff like that. So it's like a double, a doubly good reason to go, in my opinion, for some players. NA some should teams. be the stronger region with the amount of like viewership and, and even technically a few extra tournaments and like CRL and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know why there are so few up-and-comers in NA. Because when RLCS Season X happened for Europe, pretty much there was a f almost a full turnaround of who the best players were because there were already so many players who were good enough to play in RLCS, but because only one or two teams would get promoted every season, they were only filtering in, fil filtering in slowly. But then RLCS X made it wide open and all of them disqualified at once. And they just stole the spots from all of the non-mechanical, like, uh, players who quickly retired because they just weren't putting the work in. <laughs> You know, you'd, you'd, you'd be surprised. I was surprised that we didn't see more of that in North America. There seems like there's a lot of ranked warriors over there, and there's a lot of, like, mechanical players in the bubble scene, but they just don't ever win. I don't know. They just don't seem to have the ice to go deep in I, tournaments. I think that did start, though, for them earlier. I think just because it was such a strong top four, mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe, like, even weaker lower down, some of the RLRS teams came through, like... Uh, SSG, of course. Yeah, Peaks, SSG, PK. Like so, yeah. Uh, they all came through earlier on. They were there in RLCS Season 8, and that was their kind of takeover spot mm -hmm. rather than in RLCS X. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think Europe also had some players in that kind of generation as well. Wasn't that like the Astral sort of time frame um, when he was on the come up and all the players around, like, uh, around then? Like, obviously, there were still the legends, the EU legends, but. Um, yeah. I don't know, I'm surprised that there hasn't been that next generation for NA of players just coming up together. You know, sometimes teams like appear and you think, that, okay, there they are, but then they just disappear after the next event, they're just gone again. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm trying to think of it because, you know, you had like Devo Resurgence mm -hmm. you know, coming up from Savage, but that's not mm -hmm. like new players. How well, it, Singularity yeah, it ended up being SX, killed. You know, and I felt like Giants were the ones... Who, uh, who really opened it up? Yeah, Giants. Teams, I mean, they they started slapping everyone around. Yeah, they they actually qualify or no, they didn't qualify. They came second, I think, in rival series in season nine, um, and then they just failed to qualify. But then it, RLCSX happened, so qualification didn't even matter. It was actually Solary and BDS who qualified to RLCS. What would have been season yeah. ten? Um, but then Solary actually didn't really do anything. That They were like probably the biggest disappointment from RLCS Season 9 going into RLCS Season X because you qualify for RLCS Season 10, it gets changed into X, and now you just completely fall off the face of the earth. It's really weird to see that as well. I felt like a lot of the top of EU were resting on their laurels, though. 100%, but then again, yeah. I still feel like that half the time, and, and they're still fine, so I don't know what yeah. I know. Like, uh, even during George Set's dominance, he was playing 10 hours a week kind of thing, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it catches up with everybody eventually. You know, yeah. it just took, it took a while. He was dominating and, you know, got a bit... Com got very complacent. Um, and then, event, you know, RLCS Season X, at the start of the season, he was awful. He was, like, a total shambles in defense. I'll take the blame on that one. <laughs> you, yeah, you, the coach always takes the fall for that yeah. the team does badly better fire the coach gotta put it on someone <laughs> gotta put him on the RLCS desk oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Renegades love pre-jumping they really really love yeah. pre-jumping they're pretty good at it though they do read the the shots quite well I haven't seen Fever be able to do well in any of his scrims just yet. I haven't seen like like I obviously haven't seen SRG scrims or anything like that. But uh, mm. Fever's the one I'm looking at because he is he's meant to be potentially the best player in OCE. Right. Uh, yeah. And he actually does remind me of Peak Chorset in that he's like a really defensive player. He's defense first, but then when mm -hmm. he has the rune, absolutely pops off. And yeah. He just looks a little unconfident, a little bit like rusty maybe. So. 
Uh, yeah, when I watch, uh, well, from the OCE screams I've seen so far, I feel like they're, tr uh, you know, Renegades and Grand Zero, but I've mostly seen Grand Zero up until now. I feel like they're just trying to play very, like, structured and very correct Rocket League. And then I watch Sam play, and Sam are just going in and doing their thing. You know, they d they're they not... They don't look like they're playing as uh, held back, for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's odd, because, like, that that's definitely not how I'd describe either team. I think see, uh, Renegades are usually more structured, but also it's usually built around kind of... CJ always cutting, Fever always going back to defense. And that's like mm -hmm. where the structure comes from, but it's still like wild, a lot of cuts normally. Mm -hmm. And Ground Zero usually play way less standard. They're just super like at one point going for a million demos, the next point trying to gun up field and, and play for a redirect and, and take like a few risks in the defensive side. So mm -hmm. very interesting to see. Hey, they, they got a win here. Renegade's looking good in defense. Lots of success. Mm -hmm. successful pre-jumps it's uh interesting to see that but you know that's something if you know if you clock on to a team doing that you can counter it you just stop shooting <laughs> just start hitting the ball really really high like you know hitting it straight up into the ceiling because then the pre-jumping guys just out of the game you know going going off walls i wouldn't be surprised to see furia do this they're pretty good at reading bounces um hold on a second i just realized i'm way behind on shout outs let me just quickly catch up on that yummy um, M. Haynes, thanks for the 41 month tier one. Our Haven with five gifted subs, thank you for that. Spartacus RL with the brand new Prime and a tier three and a 32 month from uh, RJC. Thank you, RJC. Yeah, sorry for being always behind on shout outs in these streams, guys, but I do want to, especially when I've got uh, someone in the call with me, just focus on that conversation, focus on the game. I will get to them all when I can, though. Uh, so appreciate you guys sporting stream all right sorry about that I'm back am i back yeah yeah okay still says i'm muted on discord but evidently i'm not so we'll just go with it i think the pre-jumps are probably something good against furia because of how much they love playing for like flip resets in front of goal and stuff so mm -mm. could potentially help in that but as you said very very predictable if they keep doing it yeah, no, it's great against um, flip resets because getting in the way of somebody doing that forces them to do something else usually. Flip reset just takes a bit too long and a free jumping player will just get a touch on the ball. Yeah, let's see if Furia adapt though. They are not looking as uh, effective in offense as they did yesterday, but notice that we have actually changed colors here, chat. So it is actually um, Furia in the blue this time. Oh, CJ! Oh! Black BB. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it's not... It, like... You, it, it's just not surprising anymore. <laughs> it's just not surprising anymore. I've, I've commentated these guys for years, so... The thing is, the reason that they were successful is because they started, like, hitting all their shots. And, mm. Yeah, they, they've got to hit their shots. They've got to be clinical because you, I mean, if you play like the way they're playing, they're going to be on the back foot most of the time. And that's fine if they're going to pre-jump everything. But you've got to take your chances as well because you get less of them. Well, I was super impressed with not just, well, with the flip resets that Card was getting yesterday. I, f I feel like Sam are the best flip resetters in the world. Because uh, the complexity as well as, as Fury. And mm, I don't know, Card was just finding them like no matter where, how far away they were. And you, you, I remember like RLCS Season 7, where he was just doing it in defense for a bit of fun. They were, That's yeah. That's how he yeah. got the name King oh. Card in the first place. It, well, yeah, wasn't it yeah. PJ who was doing it in the back corner? Like just flip mm. resetting against NRG in the back corner? Because yeah. why not? And then defensive <laughs> flip resets are actually kind of meta, so he was way ahead of his time with that one. This is like why I'm a big believer in Sam is Likewise. because they came in their first their first ever RLCS and they didn't look nervous whatsoever. Yeah, they're not. And so I feel like there's eventually going to be a time where they perform and I think I think it's Furia that's going to do it. 
Yeah, I think Not Furia complexity. look really good. Um, complexity are... I don't know if this is even a hot take, but people seem to think that every time I talk about mechanics it's a hot take. But I think Furia are more mechanical than uh, Complexity. <laughs> I actually rated both Kaio and Card as individually better than any member of True Neutral last season in my RLCSX player rankings. Um, however, I did think that the True Neutral like lineup as a team like were better, obviously, that's obvious. <laughs> yeah, as individuals, I think Yan, Card, Kayo were probably all better than any anyone on True Neutral. It's these days, Complexity's Shad is obviously like ascended to that level, I think. And their teamwork is obviously still insane, but I would agree. I think Furia look really, really good, and I think they could be just as good as Complexity at this LAN, if not better, depending I how they look on the, on the actual day. They also smashed... Uh, and everybody's kind of heard this. They smashed scrims. The only team that they weren't smashing at scrims was the scrim team of the century, Reciprocity, uh, before the last one in RLCS Season 8. And as much as you can say scrims don't matter, I also feel like it's a sign that eventually, after a bit more experience, they'll figure it out, whether it's this LAN or, or another one later on this season. I think they'll be at all three, so they'll have a chance to figure it out. Yeah, I, I think so. I could see that. The the teams that do well in scrims have clearly got the talent to be good, but yeah, it's it's just different. It's a completely different environment um, in the LAN. So, you know, Furia dominated scrims yesterday, and some people based on that have now said that they're a contender to win the whole thing. I think all, I've, I've put them up slight, slightly. You know, the domin a whole day of dominating scrims is maybe like enough to swing predictions that were already close into their favor um, yeah. by a small margin. It's really like, it's, it, you can't make big changes to how you look at teams based on Them scrim results. doing well in scrims is not a surprise. So. Hmm, yeah. I, it's more just like something that I'm glad that they're doing, that they haven't like fallen off of that mm -hmm. rather than anything else. It, it gives me more confidence. Yeah, same way, like, G2 doing badly in scrims yesterday isn't worrying at all, because they literally just arrived in Sweden. And, um, even if they had been there for a whole week, honestly, if they have, like, one bad scrim day, who really cares? Like, it's just scrims, just practice. Uh, as long as they can show up on the actual event, which I'm sure they will. So, uh, Frog, thanks for the 14-month tier one. Um, pretty much no team plays in tournament like they do in scrims. Maybe Sam do, but uh, that doesn't really matter. The the two top team, two of the top teams from EU, Dignitas and Vitality, in the last one, who both only got knocked out in a game seven OT, um, play nothing like they do in scrims. Realistically, in tournament, Vitality especially in, in tournament, uh, in scrims, sorry, they're always like super, super, super aggressive, uh, always pushing forward, looking for passes, connecting really well, and then in tournament. They they really stack the net a lot, and they play a very mm, defensive yeah, game. Yeah, that's I think true. That's been part of their success in uh, in the land. So yeah, and uh, I, I I'm pretty sure you know just from listening to scrims at events, um, and you know just it's pretty natural conclusion to come to as well that comms are nothing like uh, oh, yeah. they the same in tournaments as they are in scrims. Scrims, you know, there are comms, but it's a lot more chilled, a lot more uh, easygoing. I think, you know, sometimes teams will go try hard comms for a game or, you know, maybe they'll decide this is our only scrim of the day, let's try hard comms to practice comms, but yeah, you, 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 you know, you really don't hear try hard comms when you're listening to scrims at LAN, especially when teams are within earshot of each other. They're just kind of chilling out. Going yeah, through the I motions. Yeah, uh, I think they generally... Uh, they're just more relaxed with them. I still think they try hard their comms, but they don't. Uh, they just don't say as much. There's just like no urgency. That You lose a lot of context. I think the, one of the most important things of comms is not what you say, but how you say it. I think you talked about this one time, Johnny Boy, that like flip side tactics knew exactly what Kuxir was doing, not because of what he said, but like just little grunts and stuff that he was making. Yeah, it was that, sometimes like, like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, and, the whole and team. And that's like the perfect Marky example. Well. And when you're when you're in tournament, people. I mean, Freaky's the best example. In 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 scrims, 
he'd always be like challenging everything. He'd be a beast to play. He was so annoying. And then you go and listen to his com videos and he's just like, I can't, I can't, I can't go, I can't go. And like, <laughs> I would panic so much if I was on his team. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, some players are just the funniest when you listen to their comms. I, I, no, obviously, I think we talked about this in, before several times, but the Dignitas comms video from last season has to be the most ridiculous comms, what's saved by card, M most ridiculous comms I've ever heard. Appjack, Jory is Panda, oh. where they're literally all just talking <laughs> constantly and saying the most pointless information the entire time. That, that blew my mind. I was like, what are they doing? That's, that's obviously they awful. They still do that a bit, but it's way better now. Uh, I think Abjack and, and Jory still have a little bit of that in them because there's, there's still a lot of noise, but mm. before it was just like, how, how are you listening to what anything your, your teammate's saying? Right? Yeah, some of it was just pointless as well. It's like, why are you yeah. saying that? You're, you're t saying how much boost you've got at a moment. They, they really don't need to know. Like, <laughs> you're not, you're not relevant in the position. Sometimes it's really good to know how much boost your teammate has, but if like, uh, you know, somebody's just back and their boost is fine they're like in an okay spot why say i've got 46 boost you know it doesn't matter oh look at cj finally look at cj that's very nice of kami as well i didn't notice him. yeah he almost had that yeah i think the thing that was <coughs> most surprising for me is that violent panda would need four comms for every comm so it would be like, I'm heading back, I'm at my back left corner, I've got the boost, I'm in net, I'm gonna go up for the save, I'm there, I'm still in net, I'm still in net, I'm gonna go <laughs> up, you know, I've got the next one. Like, I was just like, dude, all you have to do is you call back left boost as you're kind of approaching it and your teammates know where you are. Yeah, yeah, they just need to know where you are and like sometimes how much boost you've got. Yeah, you could literally be... Panda would call for what he wants Jorius to be doing, and Jorius would be like, I can't. Mm. Like, <laughs> he'd be like, middle, middle, middle down, and Jorius is like, I can't, bro, I'm out of boost. Like, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Sometimes it is good to like call it where you are so your teammate can actually center it, obviously. It's all situational, but I feel like the volume oh, of comms nice. is absurd. That's a good bump. Timely bumps, I... as always, by Furia. I've been so impressed by Justin's comms. They've been releasing their comms videos, and Justin's the comm leader now on, on that. He's taken over. Garrett G is, like, relaxing. And uh, from what I heard from Garrett G is that, uh, that that's kind of, like, indicative of their performance, like how well Justin's comming and, and how much he's in it. And that's really surprising from, like, a playmaker that he's comming the plays that he's making as he makes that, that is the best thing ever for somebody like Garrett G or Squishy following him up. Oh, 100%, Actually yeah. Actually knowing a creative player, because uh, normally his biggest thing is he's unpredictable and now his mm -hmm. teammates are going to know exactly what he's doing. And that's the hardest skill in Rocket League, to focus on a play you're making and combat at the same time. Yeah, it's very hard. I mean, it just takes brain power, so you have to really practice that. But uh, I, I think that sounds like a great thing as well, because Justin just has a good voice to calm. I, I know this might be, uh, you know, people are just going to be trying to read between the lines when I say this and think, okay, who doesn't have a good voice? But he, he's just a positive sounding person when he when he talks, and it is, that's his natural, uh, you know, way of talking. So he's a great person to be talking a lot because it's probably just going to make the comms positive um, compared to some people who just have naturally sounding <laughs> negative voices. That you hear them coming, you're like, oh no. Like, he's <laughs> mad, even though they're not mad. They just sound mad. Uh, it's, uh, even, if, even if you know them well, you just think to yourself constantly, he's mad. I, 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 I'm just, all I hear right now is that he's angry. <laughs> but Justin sounds really positive all the time. That I've heard. I will say, uh, even heading back to Dignitas, it adds so much more context um, when the coach and Violent Paddy kept yelling at Astral to calm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that they act, that that's the amount that they expect him to calm like I would never calm that much no either. I'd be like you idiots no I'm not calming <laughs> this much you guys are clueless <laughs> but obviously you know Astral is at the time I think the newest player on the team and yeah. he probably just wanted to try and impress as new players always do but that yeah that was just crazy crazy amount of comms chat does uh, anyone know what scrims are happening in the next hour after this slot. So basically in 20 minutes from now, are there any good scrims going down? 
there are any good international scrims. You know, seeing stuff like Dig versus um, BDS and other EU or EU scrims is cool, and you know, G2 Envy sounds cool, but it sounds way better to do uh, international. Vitality, Kato probably won't let me scream his scrims unless there's a prize pool. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna, <laughs> <laughs> totally he's gonna do it. Dig G2. Okay, Dig G2, maybe they would let us uh, stream. They were both on stream yesterday. Fairy streaming. Even less reason for them to want us to stream. The competition, the competition! No harm in asking. You really, well, okay, who can I ask? I ask Mo, actually. <laughs> Mo, it's gonna be like, k -Dub says no. <laughs> <laughs> Or K-Dub's asking if there's a prize pool. That's probably what would happen, I bet. Don't blame him, though. I mean, K-Dub's a winner. Absolutely dominating the probably the, the wealthiest Rocket League player uh, in the world. Yeah, looking at that Twitch. Uh, although then again, Twitch stats got leaked, and um, there was like lots of others above K-Dub. I don't know about recently, yeah. though. But all these people who just get crazy amounts of gifted subs are usually top of the, the Twitch earnings. And he doesn't do too much YouTube, right? Um, not the most. I think he's he's definitely on that YouTube grind now. I think he's got an editor for that, but he's uh, he started later on this. Squishy by a mile? I don't think it's squishy, but I think <laughs> I think it's. I mean, from Rocket League pros maybe, but Rocket League people, I think it's probably just one of the big um, content creators. Probably all the big content creators, to be honest, have yeah. made the most money. YouTube money is disgusting for people who have uh, lots of channel views so I'd, I'd probably say them probably John Sandman <laughs> he's got tons of YouTube channel views big he loyal Twitch community well. um, I think he's probably got like an org contract as well <coughs> but in terms of players it's probably squishy squishy get up yeah. uh, but yeah lots of people think like the salary and prize money is where the money's at for players it, not even for players it isn't even that it's Always content. Content makes way more than uh, pro play in Rocket League, at least. For now. Yeah, for now. Until next season's a uh, twenty million dollar prize pool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Imagine. By the it's way, I leave in like sixteen hours. Oh, that's exciting! So you're gonna sleep before you leave, or are you switching time zones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleeping. I've been sleeping at like 4 or 5 a.m. Kind of right, like right, right. Between. It means I just have to stay up an extra few hours. Mm hmm. That's on that. That is a 24 hour flight. I fly and then. So, what, what flights have you got? You got four hour. Sydney to. Dubai. Uh huh. And Dubai to Sweden. So, not. That's not bad at all. Well, yeah, it's better having yeah. less. Layovers, of course. What's, well, what's your layover? Because I imagine missing a layover on it's those like kind of hours, flights would be so terrible. Yeah. Three hours is pretty much ideal, I guess. Two yeah, to three. I normally prefer a lot less, but given the current times, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Oh! Gotta give it to Renegades. They're looking a lot sharper today than they were mm. other times I've seen them. This is promising to see. I feel like Furia not looking as threatening as they were yesterday, so... Yeah, Furia, I think they've I been a little bit scared games. by the pre-jumps. Uh, they've stopped aerialing as much, they stopped air dribbling as much, because pre-jumps are just the the counter to air dribbles. You've just got to go for a lot more booming touches to beat pre-jumps, because so many pre-jumps, you just smack the ball over them, they look like an idiot. <laughs> we should never have talked about money, Yummy. Everybody's just like speculating everything now. Oh god. Yeah, Every, that's everybody's my bad. Although, to be honest, like. <clears throat> I, well, you know, all that stuff in Twitch uh, got leaked. Personally, I wasn't bothered. I was like, this shouldn't, this, this, none of this should surprise people. And also, like, that kind of stuff being public isn't even a problem, in my opinion. You know, well, the only issue with it is that the viewers for the massive streamers will literally treat it like a leaderboard, and they'll just go and <laughs> gifting sub, war, like, sub gifting wars to try and get their streamer to be the most, like, high, highest earning streamer. Like that, that could be bad for a lot of people's personal finance. And yeah, the ranking thing gifting, as well. Oh. Imagine gifting subs to millionaires like Johnny Boy. They should go <laughs> to my channel and give me some subs. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, remember to it. sub to yummy, yummy underscore cheese man on Twitch. <laughs> is it a yummy underscore cheese man? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I did, uh, like, you know, I've said this before, but I did, um, before all this stuff got leaked on Twitch, like I've had my notifications turned off for a long time on Twitch and changed my minimum donation to kind of steer people away from donating except to prize pools. All my donations go to prize pools now, so I've, I've been doing this for a while, but I think other bigger streamers should take responsibility as well and start doing stuff like this. Other people are like, why bother, you know? Go I've get been the bag, doing that too, but while also not making a living, so that's pretty cool. That's preemptively cool. Uh, except this, this season, you know, like, this is the season where I make a living, so... Congrats, man. Big you deserve it. Onyx, you absolutely deserve this. Can Our we get a... Our account is quartered in size over the last five years, but we get there. Yeah, that's, that's deserved. I, I was aware of this is, and the, it was exciting to hear because I, I'm very much a Yummy Cheese Man fan. So we could get a round of applause for Yummy Cheese Man. Being able to go full living Rocket League casting. For the OGs in the scene, I'm sure that is... Super exciting news. And also the new people as well. Thanks, guys. Look at all the claps. You love that. So many claps. Yeah, no, genuinely, it's going to be so cool to have you in Sweden. And I, I think the, you know, throughout the season, I could see other, you know, casters from other regions being integrated as well. Obviously, with this LAN, the first LAN in two years, Psionics have gone um, to lengths to make it smaller. So there's less risk in, you know, December with COVID, but uh, other lands will be uh, hopefully, well, actually, you know, literally better times of the year. So hopefully get more, you know, casters, more players, maybe fans and other stuff like that involved. So having the, having like experts of every scene is huge. You know, I've watched uh, a little bit of every region, but I've not watched everything. You've watched literally all of OCE, all of Apex South as well. All of APAC North or just South? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do basically the English broadcast of APAC North, the unofficial one. So, mm -hmm. so that's like super helpful for everybody to have because it's not feasible for everybody to watch all the Rocket League. I mean, it's possible, but I don't think it's long term feasible for everybody oh, to no. be experts on every region because there's just far too much. And uh, it's really valuable to have everybody on, you know, well, experts from every region on the casting team. Thanks for all the claps, guys. I haven't seen that many claps since, well, since Renegade scrimmed into the <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> oh, I love that. I, I, I knew that's where you were going with it. <laughs> God, that was so sad last night. <laughs> I was in there with Moody talking about it, and I just decided to stop talking about the game whatsoever. <laughs> Chat was saying, uh, what was it? So not the Vitality game. Who is it Dignitas are playing after? Is it Dig G2 are playing in the next hour slot? I think it was. I'll need to message Jack. See if uh, Envy versus Endpoint as well. That one's being streamed, I think, already. Well, Scrub is streaming. But is he going to be streaming scrims? I think Scrub's just streaming rank before scrims start. At least that's what he's done every day. Scrub said he's doing replays at the next hour. G2 is their next scrim after this one. I'm so confused. People are saying different things in the chat. Um, okay, so it's Dig BDS. In 12 minutes, chat? Is that is that what's happening? Uh, Scrub's live, so maybe he's told people. Dig BDS. Okay. Boring. Nobody cares about that. Any international ones p besides Vitality? Just force Fury to do another one. <laughs> I don't think Fury have a scrim. I think they're. I think they've got a break. I think Renegades and Fury have a break after <laughs> they this. Learned from their five in a row. Yeah, either that or just literally there was nobody available. Vitality versus Envy happens right now. Is that the only cross-region scrim that's happening in? 10 minutes time. The Dig G2 is not until quite a bit later. That would be a fun one to watch. I think it's just G2 that's, in two hours. 
That's the one I, en I end up with that in my predictions bracket. And I, I think Dig vs G2 is like the one I look forward to most on LAN. And the one yeah, I that's the fun one. To predict. That's the fun one. G2 are just a really fun team and Dig as well. I've just been yeah. really exciting to watch. <clears throat> Unlike Vitality. Small, small, small. The, oh, Vitality, man. I saw them all uh, climbing up in the twos leaderboard. They're <laughs> getting on the grind. At least Alpha 54 start there. I think Ferry and K Dot fell back down like 35 or something. Uh huh. Yeah. CJ, CJ said TRK is a god in scrims. Yeah, TRK yeah, yeah. is going to shine. I mean, TRK with Khaled not being at LAN has just got more room to shine than ever because Khaled was obviously the best and the most defensive player on SRG. Now TRK is going to have that, so he's going to be, you know, doing a lot of stuff in defense. And, um,. That very often ends up being the star player. Good shot there by CJ. That was you such know. fast reactions. You think uh, you were mentioning Fever on um, Renegade's most defensive player. Very often steals the spotlight. Miss on Envy, mm -hmm. same thing. Um, Seiko. Seiko as well. He's not the most offensive player, but he's like chill out till he's got some room. Yeah. You know, th that's that's going to be really good for TRK because you could just go in on... Uh, you know, Ama just runs into anything basically and Senzo is a little bit of that as well. So they're just going to be creating a lot of chaos for TRK to come in and take clean plays. I think he's really going to shine. Look at Card, just Save. wall dashing for fun. Love to see that. So clean. <clears throat> so Digger not scrimming. Uh, is it Envy Vitality? I'm trying to remember. Sorry if I've asked this a million times, chat, but it's hard to remember what all the scrims yeah, are. Envy Vitality. Envy Vitality. Or somebody saying Endpoint Envy. We could probably hop in on that one. Did we didn't oh. see Endpoint Envy yesterday, did we? They um I don't think they played each other. Did we? No. We saw we saw Dignitas Envy if no, I'm not no, mistaken. No, oh no, we saw Envy That'd BDS. Was, yeah, it would. We saw Envy BDS yesterday. BDS, Mark by 8 was changing every car. It was Mark by 8 different cars in the scrim. It really doesn't. It really looks like both BDS and Endpoint are non scrim teams. So. BDS, uh, yeah, they've never been as good in scrims as they were in tournaments, but I mean, that's just because they won all the tournaments. They didn't win all the scrims, so obviously they're not as good. Yeah, per, I per Mark, when I did my predictions, I'm still backing BDS. I'm still backing BDS to make quarters. Um, no, no question. Yeah, I didn't put them in the same easy universe. <laughs> Guess I'm not that bad. Oh! Um, but that's because I think I had them having a bit of a a rough first matchup. So. BDS. Yeah, I think I had them against G2 or something. Ooh. Io, really well done there. Yeah, uh, BDS just look like they're all just not. Well, they're nowhere near as confident as they were before. Marked by eight in particular, mm. but. I think it's the whole team just generally aren't aren't confident anymore. They need to get their mojo back. But Monkey Moon earlier it spotted in the Fennec. Here's my take on uh, on BDS and why they came out so successful against the top of Europe is that they just perfectly countered Vitality's net stacking. In that Monkey Moon actually slows down the ball and doesn't just shoot on net like everybody else does against Vitality or did Vi mm -hmm. against Vitality. They at still, the time. I mean, they four rolled Vitality in the most recent event as well. They yeah. still have such a good matchup against Vitality. But that's less like relevant to being successful now. Yeah, you know, uh, people are just more used to Mark by eight antics in the midfield. He used to just be impossible to read and impossible to play against, but now everybody reads him quite well. Um, so he's become less effective, and I think it's really affected his confidence as well. Seeing himself be less effective, um, you know, just uh, you know, when when before you were running in making a touch and it outplays someone, now you're running in making a touch and it's pointless. You know, it's, you start to question everything you do. So. They've got a lot to figure out. I was saying Mark needs to change Fennec. Maybe that could be the solution. But that was honestly just a, a guess. Hey, Sound the Fire Bubble, thanks for 20 months Prime and also Shimmer with Randy Prime. Do his, uh, mechanics in the off season. Can you believe he only just bound Aerol left in the really? off season? Yeah. It's impressive. He just went without it for so long. There's still a lot of very top players who don't use it. I'm pretty sure Alpha 54 doesn't use yeah. air roll. 
buttons. I think eventually everybody will, though. It's Things simply faster. It's just better. But yeah, you can still be a very, you know, top-tier player, you know, best in the world, MVP for big tournaments without it. I mean, it. Turbo can do it, anyone can. <laughs> is on. Thanks for the Prime. Oh, Appreciate nice. it, man. That is a... Uh, yeah, Renegades should be winning uh, this scrim. I mean, it's only scrims that winning doesn't really matter, but they've, man, they, they've not taken their chances. I'm kind of worried about their open net accuracy under mm -hmm. pressure if it's looking this rough. Oh, just wait till you moment. see an actual open net. You'll you won't believe how far wide CJ will miss that. <laughs> you know, some of these are cloping, and those are much easier for CJ, and he's still missing it. If you give him a wide open net, oh my god, it's 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 going to go left, right, up, above, anywhere. So, but out, out for a throw in, if it was possible. He, he he's. He's missed more. I actually have a montage at one point of one game where he missed eight open nets. And that's not even... Actually, <clears throat> seven open nets. And that's that's not an exaggeration. He didn't score a single goal in the game. They still won. So mm. I guess I guess that doesn't really matter. But he, he's he's made a real name for himself. Just If you want to defend well against CJ, just leave the net open. Just leave the net open. Just, as soon as CJ gets the ball, everybody just run. <laughs> Leave He'll it score open. a clanger, you know, if there's somebody there to score it over the top of. But give him room, and he'll panic. Mm. All right, chat. We're going to be streaming NV Endpoint after this one. Um, I haven't seen them play yet. That should be interesting. Look, after seeing how well Envy did yesterday, I think they're going to be um, taking most of those games. That combined with Endpoint being... Very inconsistent. I think Endpoint yesterday got 7 0 by EG in scrims. EG are like the scrim team right now in Europe, apparently. Yeah, CJ is kind of the turbo of OCE. He's very known for his own goals as well. But I gave him some free coaching one day and I was just like, hey, dude, you should stop <coughs> own goaling. And it worked out really well for them. Uh, for a while. He still own goals every now and again. But God, he used to own goal every series. It was sad. That doesn't matter though, because he kind of like creates so much for his team anyway, because he's like playing so aggressively, looking for bumps, coming out of people's blind spots, being an idiot, you know, and it just <laughs> creates a lot of room for, for both Kami and Fever. Yeah, Fury are definitely not looking as deadly in attack today, it is worth mentioning. They just seem to be hitting absolutely mm -hmm. everything. Uh, oh, well, so I say that, Jan scores a pretty nice shot, but. Yeah, they, they were just not missing a single shot yesterday. No, every single flip reset, every single rebound, they were just hitting them all. Um, uh, you could make a highlight reel of yesterday for them. Oh yeah, for sure. It was madness. I I can see why like people would go look at scrims there and the way that they were playing in those scrims and just be like, yeah, they could win it all. Yeah, yeah, oh, if they, totally. If they could play like that on land, yeah, mm -hmm. you've got it. Yeah, that's why I and... You know, I think so many other people have been saying scrims don't matter just because people, we, we need to remind everybody that we've seen this before from certain teams who then just completely flop at lands, completely flop in tournaments, like a really dominant scrim performance. Like it, it doesn't really tell you how the matchup would go on land. Uh, it should only like swing your predictions a slight, slight margin. Yeah, Reciprocity were literally the number one team out off stage. At uh, season uh, eight. Yeah, season eight, and then we we very much did not come top of top mm -hmm. of season eight. I'll tell you that much. Am I doing grind zero at all today? We're kind of just making it up as we go here. We're just finding out what scrims are happening, and then uh, seeing what chat wants to watch. We'll try and get a good bit of variety if possible. Yesterday we followed yet, Furia a lot because they just had really interesting matches. They were playing against uh, two EU teams and an NA team. That's unlucky for Fever there. Yeah, Taka, I uh, I think um, I'll turn my volume up a little bit. I think uh, CJ will win his first series at LAN. I tweeted it so he better because mm -hmm. I'm going to cry if he goes 0-3. Zero 0-3 zero is brutal. I mean, 0-2 uh, with multiple like Game 5 losses is bad well you know it's horrible but zero three imagine 
I, I think uh, I think they're likely to win against Error Eternity and Verdi if they get that match up. And they can win against, you know, a bunch of other teams. They can they can take the win. Oh, they so. could be like G Z as well. They have been. Yeah. Recently. That that's the matchup I end up in with my predictions. And it ended no up way. being the only series that I gave to Renegades. Imagine that the only series CJ wins at LAN would be against an OCE team. <laughs> Wait, did Scrub host? Everybody's saying Scrub host. Or is he hosting? Is he rating or something? I was watching a bit of Scrub stream earlier. He's uh, a big fan of the Sam players, big fan of playing with them. He, he hosts it. I did get a notification, but Scrub, if you're listening, thank you for the host. Hope you had a good stream. And good luck in scrims. Obviously, we all know that that is to be all and end all. So, don't lose. Any reason reciprocity didn't convert? Yeah, every every team doesn't play the same way in tournament. And we came in a little bit too keen. We were like the favorites. We had like really high expectations. And we, we tried to do too much in our first series rather than just being like, okay guys, let's just like sit down, have fun. Uh, we, we put too much of our work and, and, and practice into it rather than just going, all right, let's chill. And then when things went a little bit south and we weren't playing our best, uh, we didn't know what to adjust because we talked so much at the very beginning of the series and that was what we were always really good at before is to just like set a baseline and then adjust from there and that just didn't happen in the first series at LAN and then it was hard to get the mojo back yeah and once that momentum starts especially in these short events yeah best of fives it's yeah those short events like last life kind of territory can be really really tough to uh, come back mentally from in the same way like sometimes you're just on a winning streak and you're like you feel so um untouchable that uh it can just go the other way you just feel like well we're not losing this weekend you've heard that in lots of interviews as well players will just say like well we, you know just felt like we're just not gonna lose <laughs> 